Lance Storm. A special guest and a huge upgrade filling in for Brian Alvarez. That would be Lance Storm. Yes, playing the role of uh, sometimes other people. Yes. <laughs> and 70% less whiny than your usual Sunday night show. Hobbs and Starks had a very good match. Really? I enjoyed it. It was okay. It was, it was, I, uh, I thought it was missing something to me. Julia Hart versus Bambi Hall. Just because I feel like complaining tonight, and it's it's a pet <laughs> peeve of mine. And and they are not the only ones to do it. So we'll, we'll call this a coachable, teachable moment. I hate the spot when the combatants tie up, and the babyface pushes their opponent to the corner and does a clean break, and they start over. It's like, what was your fucking plan? <laughs> <laughs> you pushed them technically out of bounds where you're not allowed to do anything. Sure. So you didn't do anything. Drives me nuts. So it turns out this show is just as whiny as uh, with Brian Absent, but that's okay. Wow. That's okay. <laughs> that's fair. Lance is very detail oriented. He is. Yeah. 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 That's he, that's okay. When the mask is on, it's about business. When he takes it off, it's time to fight. Now I want a vignette of Andrade in his office. Like Where booking flights and hotels. <laughs> Walks into a bank and everybody panics. Jay White is fucking phenomenal. I got to work yeah. with him when he was with Impact. He's a great guy and he's so amazingly talented. This was by far the best thing on this show. This was fantastic, fantastic, fantastic wrestling. Even for nitpicky anal tent of me. <laughs> <laughs> this you was... do not impress easy, Lance. This was a good TV match and I'm excited to see... What happens to Punk? But this not feel like the end of a 20-year storyline of one guy trying to beat another. I think if they did this match five more times, every one of them could be better. There was nothing wrong with this match. Don't get me wrong. Do you ever stay home? Yeah, why do you ask? You got your nice barbecue and your hot tub, and you're gone all the time. So uh, well, anyway, Granny, anything you'd like to ask uh, or talk about that's not uh, making fun of me or giving me guilt for not being around? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Tell us your worst camping experience. We'd go camping with Mike, and uh, he was a weird dude, and uh, and he found a deer carcass, mm. and so he decided he was going to take it with him. But uh, you know the carcass was uh, it was pretty big, and so he removed a leg from the deer carcass, and I just remember I was walking, and uh, all of a sudden I felt a little thing right here, and I look over, and it was a hoof. Mm. He put a hoof in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know if I ever got that hoof taste out of my mouth after that day, but that was quite horrible. Me and a lady friend of mine were camping, and the police interrupted us during the middle of something because of loud noise. <laughs> Humble brag. <laughs> Steve I don't believe any of that story. <laughs> Steve Berry says, was it the sound of the air coming out of the inflatable doll? And John replies, nope. I hate this show what crap this was there was a rape going on it was disgusting as she was taking off her panties my wife walked into the room my god i would have been less embarrassed if i was actually watching porn andrew was actually getting the dogs ready to go outside when that segment started and she was so mad at brian for making me watch this why is he making you watch this and i keep i keep telling her I don't know. <laughs> why are we doing this? Why, like, why are we watching this? Can you imagine in 2023 watching a random episode of Impact? My head would explode. I'll kill myself. If I'm watching Impact of any form in 2023, I will kill myself. I have 13 years. I've just set a deadline to remove Impact from my life. <laughs> God, 13 years before it's all over with. Because in 2023, I guarantee you and I are going to watch an Impact. I guarantee I may take it. you with me, motherfucker. <laughs> I guarantee it. MJF and Adam Cole have a team bonding session. You know what's funny is uh, there was... You know, Everything about this is funny. Something people have been talking about the last week or so is, you know, this mellow drum in wrestling. I don't like this, all this bloodline and this and that, even though it's like the most successful storyline in a whole generation. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, there's all this talk about that this week. And then we have this show where there's so much fucking melodrama on this show and it's so great. Now, when we were forced to team, I had every intention of blindsiding you and cutting your legs out from under you. <laughs> That's nuts! <laughs> said Jeff. Jeff goes, I was going to do the same to you! I was going to do the same They laugh! <laughs> ah, we were both going to be shitheads. What is more surreal than seeing Nick wrestle in AEW? 
is seeing footage of the Buddy Wayne Academy in Everett, Washington, yeah. all over AEW for the last two weeks. That blows my mind. That's actually true. From the Buddy Wayne Academy shirt here, which, uh, like a rib from beyond the grave. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't but, even notice that. But like, like, like a rib from the great beyond. Size triple X. <laughs> well, of course it was. Yes. Somebody described this match as a house show main event. But that's not in any way a uh, you know a negative. Sure. And if you've ever gone to a house show and you've seen a main event, and it's like a bunch of comedy early and just making the fans happy and total viewers, this was the second highest rated thing on the show. And in eighteen to forty nine, it was the highest. It did not turn off any viewers. It got over as big with the television audience as it did with the live audience. You just got to entertain the people. I am one hundred percent in lockstep with you now. This is lightning in a bottle. And they need to capture it and ride it as long as it lasts. And it's fun, and it's exciting, and the fans love it, and I'm afraid it's over in two weeks. You know, I know we're not supposed to talk about this stuff in 2023, but uh, Sky Blue's buttocks, it's like a caricature at this point. It's hard to take your eyes off. Every of this. every single week, like, there's more and more buttock. Nobody mm. ever said that this was going to hurt him. Nobody ever said that it was yes. a stupid idea by Tony. Nobody ever said that AEW sucked. All we said was, we think he should have won. Yeah. And it is okay to have that subjective opinion. Yeah. So get off my back. Yeah, it's not, it's not Jesus. Going to, it's not going to And affect. we don't need five pages on the Observer Radio thread with you getting mad at Dave over it. Nobody attacked AEW. Any last words, Kenny? Gasping for air, but he gets out. We have a fifth member, too. Check the screen. <laughs> This was weird. <laughs> this is only happening Here's in Here's our plan. Wrestling. I'm going to come out alone, let them beat my ass, yes. and when I'm almost dead, I'll tell them to look at the video, and then you guys show up. Yes. That was the plan. The fifth member of the elite team at Blood and Guts will, in fact, be Kota Ibushi. The Judgment Day come out. Uh, huge cheers for Finn. Huge cheers for Rhea. Chance for Mommy. Priest got some mild booze. And, of course, it's Dominic. We were like you've never seen before unless you walked on Callus. This storyline is one of Granny's soap opera storylines. It's absolutely over-the-top preposterous. And it's a good thing that, like, he's really good in his role because yeah. not many other people could pull this off. Well, he gets some of the worst material on the show, but he makes it work. I felt your power and rage. Tonight you feel my wrath and fury. My intensity cannot be matched. Like, this sounds awful. But what the dragon is saying, and I'm like... God damn! I am gonna feel his wrath and fury. His intensity cannot be matched. Badass Braun Breaker versus Ilya Dragunov. <laughs> this match, motherfucker. This match was better than any match on on Dynamite. It was. This fucking match was a thing of beauty. Beautiful violence is what this was. And Tony D'Angelo calls in and he laughs. He calls in. He calls in on the t- from, fucking telephone from from jail. Yep. And they put it over the house mic. Yep. <laughs> a prisoner. It's speaking to the people of NXT. And Tony D'Angelo laughs and says, there's no way Gals is putting one over on the family. This was our plan all along. <laughs> and I went, this plan sucks. <laughs> what? You are a horrible gangster. The absolute living fuck is going on. What the fuck is going on? And so Stax, fuck it, Stax wins. <laughs> He's out of prison. He's out of fucking prison. Okay. Because Stacks won a match. That's uh, the two shows. I enjoyed both shows a lot. Liked them.